I found this article by ESPN News Services detailing the end of Tyler Honeycutt's life. Tyler Honeycutt killed himself after exchanging gunfire with police. July 7, 2018 by ESPN News Services on ESPN.com. Former UCLA and Sacramento Kings basketball player Tyler Honeycutt has died following an exchange of gunfire with Los Angeles police Friday night. A family member on set confirmed to KABC that Honeycutt had died. The Los Angeles Police Department says it responded Friday afternoon to a report of a man with a gun, and during the initial encounter, the suspect fired a shot out of a residence and officers returned fire. Crisis negotiators were called, and a SWAT team found an unresponsive man who was pronounced dead by paramedics. The department, which did not identify the man, said he appeared to have died of a self-inflicted gunshot. No officers were injured in the altercation, according to LAPD. Several residents in the area had been evacuated as a precaution. Honeycutt, 27, played for the Bruins from 2009 to 2011. He was a second round pick by the Kings in the 2011 NBA draft and played in 24 games over two seasons before continuing his professional career overseas. The Associated Press contributed to this report. The following article is titled, LAPD releases body cam video of officers who exchanged gunfire with former UCLA and NBA player who took home life. This article was written by Josh Kane for the Los Angeles Daily News, published August 21, 2018 to dailynews.com. Police release body camera video Tuesday of a Van Nuys standoff in July with Tyler Honeycutt that ended with the former UCLA and NBA player's death by a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The video, published Tuesday morning to the Los Angeles Police Department's YouTube channel, shows a brief exchange of gunfire between Honeycutt, 27, and an officer in tactical gear. The officer was peeking from behind a wall, pointing a rifle in the direction of the home when a single shot was fired from a window. The officer immediately fired a round back in the direction of the window. The shots came after several minutes of dialogue between an LAPD negotiator and Honeycutt, who refused to leave the home after police arrived. Right now, you're not in trouble, said the negotiator, who was talking to Honeycutt over a cell phone. All right, you haven't committed a crime as of yet, okay? I'm trying to get you out of here as peacefully as possible. Police had arrived at the home in the 4700 block of Tyrone Avenue, just south of Riverside Drive, at around 5.05 p.m. on July 6th. An audio of a 911 call, a woman identifying herself as Honeycutt's mother tells a dispatcher that she's extremely concerned for her son who she believes is having a psychotic break and is hallucinating. You need to hurry because I'm afraid he's going to pull a gun out on himself, the woman says. When police arrive, the video shows the woman talks to the officers. She tells them Honeycutt is armed with a 10 millimeter handgun with three bullets. She said he also has a shotgun with no shells in it. She tells the officers that Honeycutt's struggles began recently after he returned home. He's a good kid, she says. To be honest with you, he's a professional basketball player that just came back from overseas and he was sucking laughing gas for six months. I think it scrambled his brain. Lieutenant Alan Hamilton, a commander in LAP's unit that investigates all officer-involved shootings and serious uses of force, says that Honeycutt did not have a history of mental illness. Honeycutt's mother says in the video that she had tried to call 911 on him before, but that he knocked the phone out of her hand. She says he believes she's conspiring against him. When the officers arrive, she also says she last saw him sitting on a bed with the handgun, holding their dog by the collar. She was concerned for the dog's safety. After talking to Honeycutt on the phone, the crisis negotiator says he needs backup. That's when two officers with tactical gear and rifles set up in a hallway. The hallway leads from the home's driveway to an inner yard where the officers can view Honeycutt, who remained inside. An officer mentions that Honeycutt pointed a gun at him from behind a window. Within a few seconds, the exchange of shots occurs. The officers backed off and waited for SWAT, which arrived with the mental health evaluation team. After several hours, SWAT entered the home and found Honeycutt dead. The coroner's office spokesman said Honeycutt died as a result of suicide by from a single gunshot to the head. An investigation into the shooting is ongoing. 
Honeycutt grew up in the San Fernando Valley, graduating from Silmer High School in 2009. He attended UCLA for two years before entering the NBA to play for the Sacramento Kings. The video released on Tuesday was the latest so-called critical incident video published by LAPD. In March, the Los Angeles Police Commission voted to require the department to produce video reports of every officer involved shooting and use of force resulting in death or serious injury. Stitched together by using video from the body cameras now worn by most police in the field. The death of former UCLA hoop star Tyler Honeycutt was a shock to family and friends. Written by Kevin Moore, published on July 6, 2020 on Sportscasting.com. Tyler Honeycutt is a name that the UCLA community will always remember. After playing two years at UCLA, Honeycutt had a brief stint in the NBA and played overseas. In 2018, Honeycutt died in a tragic way that impacted his family, friends, and the UCLA community. His death was shocking to many, and many people did not know what Honeycutt was dealing with behind closed doors. A look at Tyler Honeycutt basketball career. Honeycutt was a native of California and attended Silmer High School. During his high school career, he was one of the top basketball prospects in the country. He decided to stay in his home state for college and attend UCLA. During his freshman year, he was named to the Pac-10 All-Freshman team. He led the team in rebounding at 6.5 per game. The next season, he was named the team's co-MVP and was a first-team All-Pac-10 selection after averaging 12.8 points per game and led the conference in blocks with 2.1 per game. After playing two years at UCLA, he declared for the NBA draft. The Sacramento Kings drafted Honeycutt in the second round of the 2011 NBA draft. The small forward made his NBA debut on December 31, 2011 and scored two points playing in four minutes. During the 2011-12 season, he played a total of 15 games with the Kings and spent most of his time playing for the Reno Bighorns of the NBA D-League. In his second season, he only played in nine games with the Kings as he continued to play for the Bighorns of the D-League. In 2013, he was traded to the Houston Rockets and was assigned to the Rio Grande Valley Vipers of the D-League. After playing with the Vipers, Honeycutt decided to go overseas. In August of 2013, he signed with Ironi Nes Zion of the Israeli Super League. He spent one season in Israel and then signed a two-year deal with a Russian team called Kempi. During his time there, he won the EuroCup championship during the 2014-15 season. He played in over 23 Euro League games and averaged 6 points and 6.1 rebounds per game. Honeycutt was on the move yet again in 2016. He signed with Turkish club Anadolu Fs and won the Turkish Basketball Super League Slam Dunk Contest. He finished his overseas career playing with Kimpi for the 2017-18 season. The game of basketball allowed Honeycutt to play in multiple countries, and he had the opportunity to fulfill his dream of playing in the NBA. The tragic death of Tyler Honeycutt. In July of 2018, Honeycutt's mother called 911 after noticing that her son was not acting normal. When she called 911, she told him that he was using nitrous oxide for six months when he was overseas and thought it messed with his brain. Nitrous oxide is also known as laughing gas and can be taken in pills, and you can inhale it. When police arrived at Honeycutt's house, they noticed that he barricaded the entrance so no one could enter. Reports said that Honeycutt fired a shot at police, and police fired back. After several hours, LAPD SWAT entered his home and found Honeycutt dead. An autopsy was done and was determined that he died by suicide by a gunshot wound to the head. Honeycutt was 27 the time he died. Tyler Honeycutt's mother sued the city of Los Angeles after he died. In 2019, almost a year after Honeycutt's death, his mother sued the city of LA and faulted the LAPD for their tactics. Lisa Stazel, Honeycutt's mother, filed a claim that stated the negligence and wrongful death of her son. An article from the DailyNews.com stated that Stazel said the LAPD failed to de-escalate the situation and get her son prompt medical attention. The lawsuit stated that after Honeycutt was shot in the face, he started bleeding and needed emergency medical care and treatment. The lawsuit alleges that the LAPD waited too long to allow medical personnel to treat Honeycutt. At the time, the LAPD did not have any comments on the pending litigation. Honeycutt lost his life at a young age, and his death came as a surprise to many people. 